I'd like to welcome everybody um, and really say thanks so much for taking the time to join us here today. Um, thanks to our wonderful panelists who I'll introduce here and, and thanks to Syscript for collaborating with CureBase on this uh, event. So we only have 15 minutes, so we wanna make sure to make the best use of everybody's time. Uh, today we'll talk about what decentralized clinical trials are, how they work, and the importance of diversity in clinical research participation. So I'm Adam Sampson, I'm your moderator today. I head up clinical operations for CureBase. We are a software and service provider that specializes in decentralized clinical trials. With me today, I have um, two phenomenal panelists, um, both who work with me at CureBase, Arshin Ali and Myra Lane. Both of these young ladies work um, hand in hand with participants and in coordinating clinical trials and leading clinical trials every day in the decentralized space. Arshin is a clinical project manager with two years at CureBase. Her background includes a variety of healthcare and research experience. Arshin's main interests are public health, increasing healthcare quality and access, and maximizing the efficiency of research. Myra is a lead research coordinator. She has over three years of experience working directly with patients in the conduct of decentralized clinical trials. She's passionate about the impact that digital therapeutics have on, on addressing unmet patient needs, providing universal access to clinical research, and accelerating the development of new treatments. So thanks so much, Arshin and Myra. And kicking things off here, um, maybe if you can start by explaining, you know, what's the traditional model of conducting clinical trials to help us understand and put that in contrast with decentralized clinical trials? Thank you, Adam, for the introduction. Traditionally in clinical research, trial activities occur in person at a designated physical location, which is generally referred to as a research site. Study activities are conducted on site and in person by a physician called an investigator and other research staff, such as nurses and clinical research coordinators. The staff often has paper-based questionnaires where they ask the subject questions, write down their answers, and then later transcribe their responses into a research database. And from there, the data from the trial is analyzed. This does mean that participants are required to travel to the site to complete trial activities, which involves making an appointment ahead of time, making travel arrangements, and possibly taking time off of work. Excellent. Thanks, Arshin. I think, yeah, that really helps us to kind of level set as to, you know, how we've been conducting trials over the past, you know, many, many years. So um, with that in perspective, um, what's a decentralized clinical trial? Uh, decentralized trials promote a more patient-centric approach by addressing participant needs that go unmet in traditional clinical trial models. Not all decentralized trials are the same, but just generally speaking, they incorporate the use of technology and digital tools, which gives the participant convenient options to provide information that's needed for the trial, to interact with research staff, and to complete study activities. So with the use of technology, it's possible for participants to complete some or even all clinical trial tasks and procedures remotely. And to add on to what Myra is saying here, for the activities that require in-person interactions, rather than having all activities occur at a designated research site, some or all of the activities occur at an alternate location. This could be the participant's home, place of work or their own doctor's office um, or somewhere that they were going anyway, rather than having to go out of their way just to participate in research. For example, if a patient's blood needs to be drawn, a mobile phlebotomist may be sent to their home to complete the blood draw there. Okay, so yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. Maybe we can dive into a little bit more there. So a decentralized clinical trial doesn't necessarily mean that the participants will never interact in person with the, the research staff. Is that correct? That is correct. Many decentralized clinical trials use a combination of different approaches, such that the activities are completed by remote and on-site staff. There is still plenty of interaction with research staff. Similar to telemedicine, different forms of communication are used, like a video call, phone call, 
or even text message in some cases. And subjects fill out an online form rather than completing paper forms, mm -hmm. which allows the research staff to review their responses in real time. And just to expand a little on Arshin's point, um, for example, a decentralized trial might, like Arshin mentioned, start by having the participant complete an online questionnaire to see if they potentially qualify. Based on the responses, a research staff member might call them, answer any questions they might have. If the participant decides that the study is a good fit for them, they would move forward with consenting. Uh, so certain aspects of the study could be completed in the home. For example, direct to patient study drug distribution. And like Arshin mentioned, if a blood draw is needed, a, a mobile healthcare provider could go to a location that's convenient. Um, other study visits might require a participant to travel to a clinic or an imaging center uh, to obtain something like an MRI, for example. Uh, just overall activities are organized to fit the participant's preferred location and decrease the burden of travel as much as possible. Excellent. Yeah, I think that those are great points. And, you know, our ability um, to be able to take these kind of uh, new strategies and technologies that we have and apply them in such a way as to where they might be beneficial for, uh, for participants of clinical research trials sounds, you know, sounds really exciting. Um, can you expand maybe just a little bit around, you know, what are some of the benefits uh, of decentralized clinical trials that patients and participants uh, might experience? Definitely the increased convenience factor for participants. Traditionally participating in a clinical trial means that patients would have to travel often long distance and during normal working hours to their closest research site for all of activities. Yeah, another benefit is that by removing geographical barriers and time constraints, a greater diversity of patients are able to participate, uh, which is needed in order for study data to represent a universal population. Uh, there are many areas that are underserved due to the distance from research sites. So decentralized trials also opens access to communities that have historically been unable to participate. Uh, and just like Arshin mentioned, conducting activities remotely negates the need for travel, hotel accommodations, uh, taking time off work. So just generally speaking, decentralized trials uh, provide flexibility to those with competing priorities like family and work. Really um, topical, yes. This is something I think we're all very aware of right now. And, you know, in, in the light of the recent uh, trials that were done for the COVID-19 vaccines, I think that, you know, that was another opportunity for us to really see, um, you know, just how hard it is um, and how we need to employ additional strategies to make sure that we have, um, we're reaching um, populations, that, you know, across the, across the country, across the globe and into even rural areas. So maybe you could share just a little bit, um, Arshin and or Myra, you know, why do you think it's important for diverse populations to be represented? In our clinical trials. The world we live in is a diverse one and the patients included in clinical trials should reflect this diversity accurately. Science has also shown that patients' bodies react differently based on characteristics such as their age, gender, race, and ethnicity. Historically, clinical trial participants have not had sufficient representation by many minority groups likely for many of the reasons that we described previously, such as lack of access due to geographic restrictions. Mm -hmm. But we hope that by providing additional flexibility and options to participants through decentralized clinical trials, that this lack of diversity will really begin to change. Yeah, I think it's, uh, we can all be optimistic for that and, and really try and keep that front of mind. And one thing I wanted to make sure that we touched on as well today, um, something I'm sure a lot of the, the uh, participants or potential participants who are listening in is, you know, uh, decentralized clinical trials, you know, and the use of technology, it can sound kind of intimidating. Um, so maybe if we can shed a little light around, you know, what about the use of devices in these types of trials? Um, are participants expected to use their own device um, or will they be provided with you know, a device um, to use during the study? Uh, so each decentralized clinical trial is a little bit different. Uh, sometimes participants are provided devices 
um, like a phone or a tablet. Other times they're asked to use their own device. Okay. Recently, we found that participants would prefer to use their own device rather than having to adjust to something unfamiliar or even having to carry two devices. Another important consideration is that participants should be provided with an easy way to get in contact with the study team in case they have any questions or technical difficulties, such as a study email or phone helpline. Okay, so that makes sense. So, I mean, I guess the, the take home there, right, is that decentralized clinical trials, it doesn't refer to just kind of one thing. It could be many things. Um, kind of summarizing from, from multiple questions we've had there, right? It might be that everything is done from the participant's home, or it could be that the participant, you know, chooses to go in for certain things and to do other things um, from the comfort of their home. And when it comes to the use of technology, um, it, it sounds like it's just, you know, it's really important for um, participants or patients when they're considering um, whether or not to enter a decentralized clinical trial that they really understand, you know, um, what the details are about device and technology use, you know, um, in order to decide whether or not it's something that they'd be comfortable with. What other advice might you have, um, Myra and Arshin? You know, you, you guys work um, kind of day in, day out, either directly with participants or with, you know, coordinators who are working with those participants. So I imagine you've you kind of heard it all at this point, and um, perhaps you can just you know openly share some of your advice and wisdom for someone who's either considering to participate in a trial or or currently participating in a decentralized clinical trial. Um, I would say to read the consent form carefully, take time to discuss a study with family or your own doctor if you're unsure. Ask the research staff as many questions as you need in order to feel comfortable and confident that you understand the study and your responsibilities before providing your consent. And even if you provide consent, you have the right to withdraw from the study at any time for any reason. Um, be sure you know how to get in contact with the research staff in case you have any questions throughout your participation. And do your best to complete study activities knowing that your participation could potentially help advanced medicine for patients in the future. Thanks, Myra. Anything you want to add there, Arshin? Um, Just basically, you know, reiterating Myra's advice there, participating remotely is just as important as participating in person and your participation makes a really big difference in moving science forward. Absolutely. Yeah, and I can echo some of that as well. I mean, you know, we, the research that we do every day to find new treatments, um, whether it be for COVID or for you know any number of uh, conditions, and we can't do it without research participants. Um, you know, and we we really appreciate uh, everything that our participants do, and um, do know that if you're con considering participating in a trial, that oftentimes there are folks on the other end, just like uh, Myra and, and Arshin. Um, who are, you know, really um, with your best interest in mind in terms of wanting to do the best thing for science, but also wanting to do the best thing um, for all the participants who enroll in their trials. So thanks again, um, Arshin and, and Myra, so much for, for taking this time um, to talk with us today. And we do want to thank everyone for attending. Again, this was kind of just a, a short snippet to give everyone a better uh, deep dive into what it's like to be a participant in a decentralized clinical trial. Um, also, I wanted to thank CISGRIP, um, the Center for Information and Study on Clinical Research Participation, for partnering with us, um, CureBase, uh, to, to uh, put on this, this webinar. If you would like to find additional resources about what it's like to be a participant in a clinical research trial, CISGRIP is a phenomenal resource for that. You'll find a number of different um, things such as this. Um, this will also be posted uh, after our webinar here today in case anybody would like to refer back to it. So with that, yep, yeah, Arshin, Myra, maybe you wanna say a, a quick uh, goodbye and we'll let everybody get back to their day. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks everybody, have a great day.